This is Luke Paulson, the Catholic Conservative, and welcome to the News of the Week for March 30th, 2024. And if you enjoy these videos, do not forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more. More lies from terrorists. I do not care much about what is happening in all of these foreign countries. President Trump would use another word to describe them, but I choose not to repeat it. However, whether it is Russia, Ukraine, the country of Palestine or Haiti, I do not care, but since the fake news has to tell you one story, those like me have to make sure to tell you facts. Remember when at the start of the pandemic we were trusting the numbers and information from China? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Now ever since the first response to the October genocide, we have been trusting Hamas to give us the number of those that were killed. However, a statistics expert looked into these numbers and found at least three major problems. One, the kill count increases linearly with little variation, but there should be some days when it doubles or halves. Two, the deaths of women and children should be concurrent, but they are not. Three, their health ministry statistics show that Israel is not killing any non-combatant men. He suggests that Hamas calculated the daily total and that 70% of the deaths should be women and that 30% should be men. In truth, if you are going to commit a genocide, would you really be honest? Honest about the justified retaliation. Now let us go over to one of the Democrats' favorite countries, Russia. Attack on Russia. There was a deadly attack on a concert in Moscow. Officially, Ukraine has been ruled out, but ISIS has not. Even so, I doubt that Ukraine has the resources to mount an assault on the Russian homeland. I do not care much about Russia, but the fact that there was a tragedy with innocent lives fills me with grief. Considering that it is Russia, we cannot rule out that it was a false flag by their government. The perpetrators were probably hired by their intelligence agencies, just like Ray Epps was over here. However, with Russia, it can be difficult to separate fact from fiction. Besides, even when Democrats hear it right from the horse's mouth, they still do not believe it. They still do not believe that Putin endorsed Biden, and still probably believe the Russia collusion narrative. However, let us move on to what may be an attack on the United States. Baltimore Bridge Collapses Do not worry, I will not be showing you the footage of the bridge collapsing. Especially since I do not want to see it again. Moving on, there are already calls that it may have been an inside job. Now I cannot confirm this one way or another, but I do know this. Considering how much we have been lied to just in the last 10 years, I take the official narrative with a grain of salt. It may very well have been an accident, but considering all the lies about the laptop, the virus, and protests... Consider me dubious. Just watching the footage, it looks like the captain steered the ship into the support beam. We also saw the smokestack revving up a bit as if he was speeding up. Furthermore, there are multiple backup generators on these ships so that they do not get trapped at sea. There's something awfully spooky going on around here. In addition to the property damage and loss of life, the port is inoperable and countless people cannot commute. Baltimore is already on the path to financial ruin. As recently as 2013, they had $745 million in debt, which has no doubt increased. According to the USCIS, it is a sanctuary city and probably has a lot of unsustainable big government policies as well. Will they be able to handle this financial ruin? Now let us go over to Canada, where individual rights no longer exist. Canada fights religious liberty. Remember when President Obama fought nuns who did not want to kill children? Pepperidge Farm remembers. Now Canada is basically doing the same thing. Made or medical assistance and murder now forbids religious groups from being exempt. After all, in a socialist system, those who are sick are a drain on society. It is much easier for the state if they are eliminated. Officially, it is far too trying for these people who already want to end their lives to have to look somewhere else. I am sure that these people can go anywhere else in their country to have a doctor kill them. The fact remains that if you help someone kill himself, you have to answer to God for it. This leaves these religious groups with a few choices. One, kill people and have to answer to God. Two, not kill people and be shut down by force. Or three, shut down willingly and leave countless without care. I would not want to be these people, but in the words of St. Peter, we ought to obey God rather than men. Pray for these people that they do the right thing and protect life. Back to the United States. The Supreme Court on the pill. The Supreme Court has heard oral arguments concerning the abortifacent drug Mifepristone. Ever since Roe v. Wade was overturned, we have had 50 battles across this country to end infanticide once and for all. While states like Texas have made the abominable practice completely illegal, other states are ramping up their murders. 
Liberals and sanctuary states for the unborn are getting the pill shipped from liberal states. At least according to CNN, the justices are wondering if they need a nationwide ban on the drug. After all, it is safe and effective. It may be effective, but it is not safe for the child and may not even be safe for the mother. If she takes it too late, she can end up in dire straits as well. The fact remains that the mother's body was built by the Almighty to be a safe space for these children. Now it is a spot where the child cannot even depend on his own mother for safety. I hope and pray that the pill can be made illegal. On one hand, the justices have an obligation to rule justly based on the law of the land. On the other hand, the justices will have to answer to the Almighty if more children die from this pill. However, we at least need to celebrate the victories that we are getting today. Trump is not tired of winning. Nathan Wade, who was in a relationship with his boss, Fanny Willis, resigned from his post. As I understand it, Willis now has to appoint someone else to persecute Donald Trump, and if no one will take the job, her case has to be thrown out. Next time, President Trump will think twice before making a phone call asking for a secure election. However, persecutor Jack Smith also has a problem. Now the judge is tying his hands, as the fake news says. However, considering that this is a persecution, it is probably closer to justice than anything else. Let us be frank, you can trust a persecutor even less than you trust a lawyer. And in New York, President Trump's bond went down from $545 million to just $175 million. Not only is this a difference of $370 million, a reduction of 68%, it is much more reasonable. President Trump does not even need to use the money from Truth Social as he will probably be able to pay it in cash. So far, all of their attempts at persecution are just falling apart. Even so, according to AOC, President Trump might not have even committed a crime. AOC offers legal advice. And we need to trust her. She was a bartender. She asked what crime specifically Brandon was accused of breaking. The legal expert called to testify replied that he was accused of RICO. The same woman who is scared of her garbage disposal decreed that this is not a crime. It is a charge that was created to go after serious criminals, but also President Trump for some reason. Since AOC must also identify as a lawyer, she ruled that RICO is not a crime. As such, President Trump can go free. After all, AOC said it, and without crying in front of an empty parking lot. However, let us now go to the Lone Star State for some more news. Lone Star Battles. Florida banned the use of social media for anyone under the age of 14. I am not sure if this is legal, but it is what it is. However, in Texas, we are striking at something that can be just as dangerous. Texas is far from being heaven, but it is the next best thing, according to Tanya Tucker. Texas now mandates that websites like Pornhub confirm the ages of the users. Now, I think that this is technically illegal, but we have a higher law to answer to. However, while Texas is right on moral laws being passed, political laws, not so much. Abbott signed a bill that eliminated mandatory vehicle inspections. While I do not like these, it is not as if we are getting away for free. The money will now be paid at the vehicle registration office and pay for retirement accounts. Big garages might not see much of a difference, but the mom and pop shops definitely will. This is a major blow to their income. On one hand, this law should not have existed in the first place. On the other hand, it is a small fee to help out your mechanic. And I would rather that than some government employee that I am already paying too much to. Speaking of people, let us talk about a few of them. Neuralink patient tweets. A quadriplegic from Arizona is now able to play chess and tweet using only his mind. This has the potential to do so much good in the world. Automobiles and electric lights were thought to be the end of the world when they were first introduced. People warned against the danger of both of these things when they first came onto the scene. But now most people, even Greta Thunberg, cannot imagine our lives without them. Some call this technology dangerous, and it may very well be. However, I would like them to say that to Nolan Arbo who now has freedom that he never had before. Candace Owens has a beef. Unlike Steven Crowder, Candace Owens does have a reasonable beef with the Daily Wire. They are the typical conservative ink company. They will endorse gay marriage and allow you to criticize any country in the world except for Israel. Ben Shapiro was okay with Hillary Clinton winning just so that Donald Trump would not. He also was scared of calling pansexuals weird. The fact remains that he and the rest of that company may not be members of Operation Mockingbird, 
but they only weaken the united front that we need to have against the fake news. It started with Candace Owens endorsing neocon Nikki for Prime Minister of Israel, and being sad over the deaths of civilians in Gaza, even though as I talked about a few minutes ago, those numbers are wrong. And now one Rabbi Shmuley made several claims about what she said that are not true from what I can find. He even immaturely mocked her with the costume on the right side of your screen. Her contract was bought out, and she is now independent. While I would love for us all to get along, the right can be just as dangerous with cancel culture when they want to be. However, no one at the Daily Wire leadership can be trusted, as Jeremy Boring now says that saying Christ is king is anti-Semitic. Too bad, sir. It is not anti-Semitic because he is king of the Jews and king of the universe. However, let us move on to another freedom fighter, James O'Keefe. James O'Keefe and FOIA. James O'Keefe has found yet another secret base in Arizona. This is why Carrie Lake was not allowed to win. She would have been shutting them down as fast as O'Keefe could find them. After finding the hotel, he was naturally confronted both by private security and by the police. O'Keefe wants the body cam footage of the officers who were on the scene and submitted a FOIA request. It is now six weeks out and the request still has not been handled. That is unheard of in the realm of journalism. If the officers did not say anything wrong, they should have no trouble with accountability. Body cams first started coming online after fake news about the death of a man with a high melanin concentration. What I said then, I say now. They not only keep people from making false accusations, but keep honest cops honest. However, if this footage is not available by FOIA request, they may as well not even be running. James O'Keefe has threatened to sue to get this footage and go to the Attorney General of Arizona if need be. My money is that they are being told to keep silent so that no one will talk about these secret bases. Ooh. Did I mention that they threatened to arrest him yet again? The sheriff's office is hiding something and I would not be surprised if it was the governor's office that issued the gag order. Maybe I'm just blowing smoke. Maybe I'm completely off my rocker, but that is just my opinion. And do not forget to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more. But before you go, on the left I have last week's video, but you may also enjoy the video on the right.